Hey guys, today I'd like to discuss force on a charged particle moving in a magnetic field. Um, so in order for a charged particle to experience a magnetic force, um, two conditions need to be met. One, it has to be char a charged particle, it cannot be a neutral particle, and um, it also needs to uh, be moving perpendicular to the magnetic field, or at least have a component of its velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field. So if the velocity and the magnetic field line are parallel, no force will be exerted. In order to determine the direction of the force, you need to use the right-hand rule. So remember, the most important thing about the right-hand rule is to use your right hand. Um, so. In this case, you're only going to use your right hand when it's a positive particle. So looking at page 60 in your workbook, you have a diagram that looks like this. And um, this demonstrates how you will use your hand um, to determine the direction of the force. So your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, B. Your thumb points in the direction of the velocity of the positive charge. And the force comes out of your palm. So it's like Iron Man. Comes out of your palm. Um, I have a very high-tech three-dimensional model here. Um, and you will notice that... I'm just going to orient this like my hand. So on top... I have the magnetic field that's directed toward you now. Uh, my thumb is in the direction of that pink marker. That is the current or direction of the positive charge and force comes out of my palm. So all three of those quantities are mutually perpendicular to one another. So you have a few examples and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, draw the examples with you. And so just to get you started. So we can see this is a positive charge. So we're going to use our right hand. Um, if it's a negative charge, you can use your left hand. Um, so we'll get to that in a moment. So I'm going to point my thumb in the direction the charge is moving. Magnetic field B is represented by these X's, and we discussed that when you have an X that indicates into the page. So I'll point my fingers into the page, the direction of the magnetic field, and force would come out of my palm. So it would be directed to the left. And force is still F, but then we'll put a B subscript uh, there to indicate that it is a magnetic force. Um, so we definitely see a force to the left. In this example, we again have our magnetic field directed into the page, but now it tells us that the force is down. So if I orient my fingers into the page, palm facing down in the direction of force, my thumb would be directed to the left, which tells me that charged particle would have to be moving to the left or have a velocity to the left. In this example, it tells us the direction of the force and the direction of the velocity and asks us to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So I've got to have my palm facing to the right. My thumb needs to face down in the direction of velocity and I can see that my fingers would have to be directed into the board. So I would have a field, a magnetic field, directed into the board, and I would represent that field with X's, and I would label it B, our variable for magnetic field. Finally, we have a magnetic field directed into the page. And it tells us the direction of velocity. We are to determine the direction of the force. So fingers into the page, 
thumb in the direction of velocity, force out of the palm. So up the page. So there's my magnetic force. I'm going to go back to this example in just a moment. I just wanted to go through those questions. So it asks you, uh, what is the orientation between the force and the velocity? And you can definitely see those are perpendicular. The orientation between the velocity and the magnetic field, also perpendicular. And the orientation between the magnetic field magnetic field and the force Ugh. are also perpendicular. So the red is the force and the blue is the magnetic field. So perpendicular, perpendicular, perpendicular. So um, the last two questions on page 60 ask, is the charge accelerating? If it is, in what direction is it accelerating? Well, the whole first semester, we basically talked about um, force and acceleration, and we learned that any time there's a net force acting on a body, it causes it to accelerate. So in this case, if there's a net force acting on a charged particle in a magnetic field, it has to accelerate. In what direction does it accelerate? Well, we know that uh, objects always accelerate in the direction of the net force. So in what direction? In the direction of the net force. Then it asks us to describe the motion of a charged particle that is trapped or captured in a magnetic field. So I want to illustrate that using our last example right here. So um, this charged particle is moving to the right, but it's getting pushed up. So a moment later, this charged particle would be somewhere over here, and it would have a velocity like that, right? Because if it's moving that way and we push it up as it's moving, it'll end up over here. If we use our right-hand rule from this position, fingers into the board, thumb in the direction of velocity, we can see that the force would be directed kind of um, up and to the left. So now it's the particles moving up and to the right, it's getting pushed up and to the left. So a moment later, it might have a velocity straight up. Using the right hand rule, I can determine that the force on that charged particle is to the left. So now it's moving up and it's getting pushed to the left. So it might end up over here with a velocity in this direction. Right hand rule tells us the force would now be down and to the left. So it's moving this way, getting pushed this way. So a moment later, it might be up here, moving to the left. Right hand rule tells us that the force would be down, moving to the left, getting pushed down. And I think you can see the pattern here is that this charged particle would experience circular motion, uh, uniform circular motion even, um, as long as it, the magnetic field and velocity remained perpendicular, um, we would definitely see circular motion. So you can see where that might lead us. So I want to go through a few examples with you. If the charge is negative, um, I, right in the middle of page 61, there's an example that shows magnetic field lines straight up like this. It tells us it's a negative particle. And um, that negative here, that negative particle is moving down. So it has a velocity down. Um, so as soon as you see the negative particle, you you could do one of two things. You could continue to use your right hand and just uh, 
use the opposite direction for velocity, or you can use your left hand. I find it much easier to use the left hand for negative particles. So watch out for negative particles. You're gonna use your left hand. Um, this one, this particular example, um, if I use my left hand, is there any way that I could possibly have my fingers oriented in the direction of the magnetic field and my thumb straight down? So um, my hand does not bend like that and I don't wanna try to make it bend like that. And if yours does bend like that, I don't wanna know about it. Um, but that is an indication that there is no force, uh, no magnetic force on this charged particle moving in the magnetic field because the velocity is perpendicular to, I'm sorry, because the velocity is parallel to um, the magnetic field. Um, suppose we had this negatively charged particle and it was moving instead of straight down, kind of down and to the right. So in this case, this velocity has a component down or a component parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. And it also has a component perpendicular to the magnetic field. The perpendicular component of velocity is the only part of the velocity that would produce any force on the charged particle. So we resolve the velocity into um, horizontal and vertical components. Use my left hand because it's a negative particle. I'm gonna point my thumb in the direction of the perpendicular component, my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and my palm would be facing into the board so I would represent that force on this charged particle. That's an X, and so my force is into the page, and this is a negative particle. So left hand, force into the page, I represent into the page with an X, that's my force. All right, so I wanna just, um, I, you're gonna do page 61 on your own. Again, watch out for those negative particles. And you're gonna move on to pages 62 and 63. So because a current carrying wire has charges moving through it, electrons moving through it, um, a charge a current carrying wire in a magnetic field will also experience a magnetic force. Um, so on page 62 and 63, you have several examples um, that ask you to determine the direction of the force on a current carrying wire in a magnetic field. So I wanted to talk about just a couple of them. Um, number two, uh, we have a wire and it shows that the magnetic field is coming out on top and going in um, on the bottom of the wire. So it would look like this um, using my right hand. So magnetic field out on top, in on the bottom, which means the current would have to be to the right. However, it asks in number two for the electron flow. So electron flow would have to be to the left. Um, and then just one more example, number seven tells us the electron flow. Right, this is labeled electron flow here. So you could, if, if you like, you could use your left hand for this example, um, or you can point your thumb in the other direction. Uh, but if this is my current carrying wire, magnetic field directed down, my thumb is pointed to the left opposite the direction of the electron flow, the force on this wire would be out of the page or out of the board in this case, um, which we represent with a dot. So the force on that wire would be out of the page. Now, just to show you, if I used my left hand, I would get the exact same result. So either way works.